Hey, you guys. I'm going to read some questions first. This is Sheldon, and welcome to another session of Julia tells Sheldon to answer questions that you guys posted that she found on the internet that then she gave to me that I will now answer the questions the best that I possibly can. Question number one. Hey, Sheldon, thanks for the videos. Well, you're very welcome. It's fun. Would you be kind enough to talk a little bit about how to draw the back of the human figure, especially the upper back around the scapula and the shoulders? Well, of course, not a problem. And you obviously have done some studying because you know what a scapula is. That's pretty cool. Um, and then we're going to answer another question, and this one is less about drawing and more about advice, which is, I think, in today's day and age, probably just as important. Um, let's see what this says. Um, I was in a class of yours at Chapman like five years ago. So like, well, totally. Um, that's pretty cool. So we have like five years, so that's like a valley guy in Orange County. That's pretty cool. Um, like five years ago. And I've really missed your teaching style. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. Um, that's really nice to hear. Um, it's a crazy teaching style, but it's all fabricated. It's all scripted. And it's all meant to keep you awake while we go through stuff that could be very boring. Um, I've been practicing drawing and digital painting. OK, that's all the same. Ever since then, and I think I want to pursue illustration as a career. Well, perfect. That's great. Um, but I'm struggling to get any kind of work. Um, where's a good place to start? Thanks, Daniel. Okay, um, let's start with the drawing first. And what I'm going to do is a, uh, a back, a torso. And then we'll move on to talking about the, uh, the job. Because, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where it's at, man. You know, you gotta, you, in the end, you gotta, you got to have a job. And you gotta live. You gotta live your dream. And uh, we'll get into that. Okay. So now let's uh, draw. Not a self-portrait, but close. This is Prudhomme. So we want to try to get you know the rhythm. Here's the scribble. And if you've watched my other videos and stuff, or you've studied, or you studied with me, so you're right there at those videos. You'll see that we really like to separate things. So like the rib cage, the head is separate from the torso. Uh, the torso is made up of two units. Uh, the rib cage and the pelvis, and they're separate. Guys have straight pelvises because they have flat butts. Okay, so here we go. A lot of people have trouble drawing uh, the back, and I've really given it some thought, and I know you guys are probably cringing, thinking, uh-oh, Sheldon's given it some thought. That's dangerous. Uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to erase this head and move it forward? Um, what are we going to do? I've given it some thought. And it goes like this. The reason why you have trouble drawing the back because there's just nothing to get your hands on. There's nothing to, you know, you're in the front, whether you're male or female, you got boobs, you know, and you can get your hands on those boobs, and the boobs have form. Form cast shadows, and you got tone. You got what do you got on the back? You got nothing. You know, there's a great old story that you know has been passed down through the ages. You know, year after year, century after century, and it's about some guy. You know, he's making wild, passionate love to his mate, and this was a male-female relationship because, of course, we got to make sure we're, you know it's all the same. Yeah, but this was a male-female uh, relationship in the story. And uh, he says to his mate, he says, you know what? You need a shave and you got no boobs. And you know what she said back to him? She said, get off my back. And that's it, okay? So backs don't have boobs. But they could have man boobs. Ooh, man boobs. That's a, a modern day concept. So here's this. Pel uh, pelvis. So we have the rib cage, one fist between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the pelvis, like that. And then you know, we'll bring the leg down this way and bring this leg up here. Nice and sketchy. Okay, real important. 
we want to make sure we get the butt cheek in the right spot. Okay, you got the butt crack, and uh, you have a real tough time, you know, being a worker on someone's house if their butt cracks in the wrong spot. Because when you bend over, people are going to go, "Oh my God, his butt cracks in the wrong spot," and then they're going to be spending so much time thinking about that they might forget to pay you. So you want to get that butt crack in the right spot. So just do perspective. There you go, and right there. Now it's in perspective, and the butt cracks in the right spot. So notice now that we have the rib cage and the pelvis, and they're floating. And I like to really, pers you know, really push that with you guys, because you know there's a lot of, you know, for the anim animators out there, you know, we love breaking joints, you know. And what's breaking joints? Well, if you want to break the joint, don't put it in, and then you can really float these. Uh, you know these uh, extremities and really have a good time and float them around. All right, so we got that. This is the pelvis, and this is the rib cage, and there we go. Okay, now the next step. Notice how we're starting with the rib cage with no arms. The arms are, you know, when football players go to work in the morning, they have no arms. All they have are uh, is this. The arms are connected to their shoulder pads, and the shoulder pads fit over their head, okay? So there's your your scapula, it's got a nice right angle, and there's your arm, and it fits over the rib cage. So sometimes if you notice when there's a, uh, a football game and all of a sudden they, um, you know, they cut to a commercial, because sometimes the people get caught, you know, they get hit so hard that the uh, shoulder pads fly off and, and you got these people running around without, you know, arms, it's really, it's really sad looking. And uh, so they got to cut away, and um, then they got to put the, you know, you got these flapping shoulder pads going all over the field, and they're flapping all over the place, and people in the audience are, you know, they're throwing up in their beers and their hot dogs, and it's disgusting. But you know, they're sports people, so what do they know? And um, and then they got to put the, the the whole shoulder pad back on, and uh, connected to the shoulder pad are your arms. So these things can really float around. And that's important. All right, so we got that. We got this. We got this. Now, if you notice that uh, when you're drawing these uh, arms, what can happen is once the arm gets to here, the scapula still stays the same. Boom. And we still have that right angle, so that works. But once we get to this area here, where the arm goes up. Now draw a line from that arm into the scapula, do a right angle, and look what happens. You got really beautiful anatomy, and it's and it's mobile and it works, and you can use it for your digital, you can use it for your rigging, you can use it for everything. So there you go. So it's all the same, digital, traditional. It's all the same. Um, right now I'm drawing on a Cintiq. I have three monitors, not just two. Um, which I need. I could use 20 monitors if I can get my hands on them. Um, I'm sitting in front of five monitors and um, three different computers right in front of me. Now that's just PC. Um, I also have Macintosh. So I am PC and Mac and my Mac is completely mobile. So once I take my backpack and put it on my shoulder, I have the new iPad Pro, which will work as a Cintiq, and then I have another um, iPad, which works as a dual monitor, and then I have my um, my Apple laptop, and they all beautifully come together, and they all talk to my phone, and they're all connected, and you're not going to be able to work today without the digital, but with digital and no uh, traditional skills, uh, as they, Sylvester from the Tweety says, you're screwed. Um, I have, I'm in about 20 different sketchbooks, I'm hoping to get another one. I draw from morning to morning, I practice everything traditional, and then I work digital. So it seems to work well for me because when you're working um, traditional, you don't have the undo buttons. And um, so you have to be able to really think your way through it. And then when you start working and you're working um, digital, then you're not, you don't have as many crutches. 
and uh, your work actually starts to look like it's traditional but it's of course digital too so they're all the same so if you notice I'll, I'll color these in a second um, I'm gonna go this way this way and it's gonna go like this and it's gonna stick right here and I'm gonna bring this in a little bit with the male okay and we go like that so what do we have we've got our trapezius here we have our latissimus dorsi which could be purple here see they overlap that scapula which is pretty cool and then over here which will be orange will be the serratus anteriors coming down like that and that will take you right into your external oblique which goes right on top of your iliac crest right here and that will come right over here to what is known as your sacrum So, you know, just as fast as working traditional. And this is where you can put portraits and artwork and all that kind of stuff right there. But look, you see how the structure works? That's what I need to see in the work. And it's missing in so much work. So take a look at your stuff. If it's missing, then uh, give us a call. we got to fix that real fast. So there's your structure, okay? So that's your story. Um, one of the things that... Uh, we're noticing in the area of the um, man boobs is uh, so look we're gonna go here right we got this look how flat the back is we have this line here we got this one here wow that's starting to look familiar okay so what if I went like this came around the back and used this mass to show some shape, put a little tattoo there, coming on down, got this, and then coming off of that with another shape, and then feel another one coming out this way, whoa, this is getting a little bit weird. way to the crack of the butt <gasps> oh look at that the butt is really a woohoo see clinically speaking okay let's get into some anatomy study the butt the term for the butt is the popo and the term for the MBA because there are some private schools that where this is called but it won't let you say pubic okay so this would be the MBA a middle body area but I like to call it the woohoo so could it possibly be that the popo is really the woohoo and the woohoo could be the popo who would know the woohoo would know we can bring this arm this arm would still work going back see it's going back in space now from here this pit of the neck that's on the other side would also be the pit of the neck here and then the neck would go forward and then there would be the face right there so you got to own your drawing have some fun with it have a sense of humor have a good time bring this around like this make it fit front is the back and the back is the front and uh, now you have something on the back that you can get your hands on okay so let's go back over to here and finish the back okay so while I finish the back and show you how the anatomy works and everything let's talk a little bit about careers number one the first thing you want to be thinking about when you're thinking about your career is where do you fit okay um, we like the idea that you're an artist. You're not 
no business is going to survive without the artist. And uh, they need the artists. And, you know, it's really funny because a lot of times people will say, hey, do you have a friend in art school who can, you know, wants to make a few extra dollars? You know, well, why aren't they calling the pros? You know, why are they asking you for your friends? Why aren't they calling the pro? Because the pros are expensive. And, uh, you know, so artists are expensive, and they're expensive because they're trained. And they've got the training. So the first thing we want to do is know where you fit in the world of um, the art. You know, where do you fit? And that should be done at your university. That um, After you were done with my, my class, which are all the fundamentals, so in mine, what you, you know, like at my school, at Children's Art Academy, what you really um, focus on are the fundamentals, and they are as follows. Head drawing, figure drawing. Now, everybody will show you their head, but they're not going to show you their figures. So I don't want you drawing any figure drawing that's not from a professional model, okay? I stress that in all my classes, at my school, everything. I don't want you going to to places that are not um, not endorsed, okay? So you want to have a professional model. Professional models know how to pose um, so that they're respectful, okay? But head drawing, figure drawing, and then you want to have perspective. And the perspective we're looking for is going to be, you know, you'll learn clinical perspective and that's fine, but you want to have perspective you can use. I like to call it perspective for the common man. Okay, so perspective, you know, how do you work in that world? Um, landscape composition, because our figures, whether it's for illustration, animation, concept, story, it's all going to fit inside of a, um, you know, inside of a world, and that world has to be designed. So we're going to do landscape composition, and then we're going to do um, in perspective. Okay, so head drawing, I always have to try to rhyme it. Head drawing, figure drawing perspective. Landscape composition, value, and color. That should net out all of your um, traditional, you know, fundamentals. Then, of course, you learn your computer programs, but that's no different than learning watercolor or acrylic or anything like that. I practice everything traditional, and then I come back and work digital, and it seems to work really well for me because, you know, um, there's no crutches when I'm practicing in my sketchbooks traditional. I don't have that uh, that crutch. I can't do an undo. Um, and then when I'm working digital, I'm less likely to stay with the crutches. Okay, and it gets more fresh. Okay, so you have that. Now, the other part, um, that's where you're in your third year of college and your fourth year of college. And that's where you're going to be working mostly um, with the higher up professors. Uh, a lot of them are chairs, and they like to take charge of this area because this is where they're going to they're going to shine. You're g they're going to be famous, and uh, your success, and they get to really love your success. Um, for me, I have been teaching at um, I've been teaching for 36 years. Um, I've been teaching at San Jose State for probably going on 20 years. I live for that school. I taught at your school um, for only five years. It was a favor. It was um, I was asked, "Hey, would you would you teach here?" I said, "Sure." And uh, so I taught there. My five years was up, and I moved on. That's different than a San Jose. A San Jose is my church, it's my temple, it's my life. And I got to tell you, when I walk into that classroom and I see those kids, I live for them. I get up at a quarter to four in the morning, I fly up there, I walk into my classroom, and I melt. And um, I've been doing it for 20, and I'm going to do it for another 10 to 15. That's what you want to look for. Um, we also want to talk to the parents now. I don't usually get to talk to you because it's illegal in the state schools to talk to parents, but now I can. Um, find the school that, that just melts for your kids because that's where you're going to get your mentoring. Okay, so now, third year, fourth year, now you're starting to figure out what you want to do, and this is where that school helps you.
and um, and then you do your work. But now you get out there, and you start to think to yourself, you know, I don't know, man, it's not working. Um, you get a couple bloody noses, you get the rejections, and you know maybe you didn't have the right questions in school, and now you want to go back. Your school prides itself on connections and location. No school can guarantee you a job. That would be silly. But a lot of schools pride themselves on the resources they bring to the students, not only in their facilities, which I've never seen one better than your school, um, but the actual location and connections. And I asked a lot of students, you know, why they went to a school, you know, so far away, and they say because it's close to Hollywood, and um, the connections. So now it's time to take advantage of those connections. So what I would do if I were you, is now that you know what you want to do and you figure it out, um, get that portfolio together, go back to the school. Um, educators love this. I do, and um, and go in there and say, okay, I need some help. You know, I'm a graduate, and I want you to help me out and uh, show them the work and see what opportunities are out there. And so for this, you're going to have to go to the people who have the connections. It's not going to be the front office. It's not going to be, you know, the career center. They're dealing with all the careers. Um, again, look at the websites, and you'll see that what you have is a school that prides itself on the ability to be connected to an industry that, um, as they say, needs connections. And uh, you've got all these, you know, you see it online all the time, all these incredible people that are coming to, uh, to the school and showing uh, what they do and, and, and talking to you about what they do. Um, maybe it's time to go meet them and, uh, and go see them. So if you contact the, uh, the chair, and say, you know, I really would like to meet that person that was here giving that talk. Can you set up an appointment for me? And I want to uh, to go see what opportunities there are. And now I want to talk to the parents because I'm a parent. And um, again, you know, this is, you know, I'm talking to you as a parent. Um, you paid for it, and uh, you know, you paid for it. So. Now it's time to say, hey, um, what can you do for me? And, uh, you know, that's why I went to you. And I talked to a lot of parents because, you know, we deal with colleges. And that's the number one thing that they say regarding the school is that I will get that support when it's done. So make the phone call. And, uh, again, the professors, they're busy teaching. You know, the chairs will have the time and they have the resources. Now. Let's say um, you realize that you need some more training and, uh, you know, you don't want to go back, you know, it doesn't work to go back to school or whatever, or whatever, whatever. Um, we have a summer program at our school. And um, I own an art school. So, again, my, my two loves in my life is, of course, my school where I get to teach this. I get to teach the fundamentals the way I was taught in the studios to a bunch of grammar school kids, middle school kids, and high school kids. So when these kids graduate from high school, they're ready to rock and roll, and they're ready to get in there. And we've done a lot of thinking about, you know, where they fit and what their passion is. And, uh, and then they come back during their breaks, and that's the key, that these kids during the summertime and their breaks, they come back, we get our hugs, and they continue to study. And that's what we have at our school. And it's coming up pretty quick. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. And let me give you the information that I'm supposed to give you. We have a program that runs during the summer. We have two different programs. We have what's called boot camp. We call it boot camp because it's what it is. It goes from morning to morning. And these kids come in. And whatever they're having trouble with, is what we work on, whether it be head drawing, figure drawing, um, perspective, whatever it is. And uh, the kids are treated well, 
treat with a lot of respect and it's really fun. So that would be the boot camp and that's during the summer. And um, let me get them. Let's go with this one like this. And our school is called um, Sheldon's Art Academy and I can't type and talk at the same time. So here we go. Sheldon, plural, Art Academy dot com or you can email us at Sheldon's Art Academy at sbcglobal.net. Okay? And um, the other program that we do, which we just started last year and it was really successful, and uh, that's our portfolio program. And what we do in this program is everybody works on the same narrative but they get to find their personal voice, what, they, what, they, what their style is. What you need to do is you need to have your own style so that when you show your portfolio, the people looking at it can remember you. Um, and then you need to be able to do everybody else's style. So we're going to teach, we teach the fundamentals very heavily, uh, very strong, and, but we also try to find what the students, what their artistic voice is and then we, we give a portfolio that shows both. And, it, and it's a real interesting uh, way of working because you know, you gotta be able to, to say, wow, you really have a wonderful um, style, but I can also see that you can do everybody else's style. Um, so if you have a question on that, our phone number is 818-706-9444. And uh, you can give us a call, you know, come on in and let's take a look. And then what happens is we have a portfolio, it's a common narrative, because you're gonna have to be able to work with that, you know, when you're out there working, everybody's on the same project, but then you find your own. Your Last year we netted out, and we'll do the same, uh, seven environments, seven concept pieces. So I teach a lot about, uh, you know, time management, because I work a lot of jobs. I have a lot of art careers going. A lot of time management, how to present yourself, how to interview. We even made cold calls last year. We actually got on the phone and cold called uh, somebody right out of the phone book. And uh, the cold call went really well and the, the person said, I'll give you guys internships. I'll do whatever you want. So that was fun to teach you how to get out there and get out in the real world and make it happen. Uh, so seven environments, three character designs, a lot of crowd scenes, a lot of incidentals and props. Somewhere in there you'll find your passion, but this, hopefully the person looking at your work We'll see that you can, uh, you know, fit in a lot of different areas. And we're doing a lot of traditional work, but all of the finished work is digital. So all the kids are on their computers, and of course I'm on the computer too. I hope this helps you guys. Um, I would say the first thing for you, Daniel, is to think about what you want now that you're out there and you've had a little experience. Go back home. Go where they love you. Go to the school that you went to. Go right to the chair. Go right to the head of the department and make an appointment with them. Sit down and have them um, look at your work and have them guide you and have them show you where the opportunities are today because that's what they pride themselves in. And not a whole lot of schools can pride themselves that way, but yours does. Uh, nobody can guarantee you a job. Nobody can guarantee you a job, but they can certainly guide you. Parents, same thing. Go in there with your kid. Um, sit down and say, okay, now that we've been out, I've got that piece of paper, I've got that diploma, it means something. It means that my kid has certain skills and certain programs they know. Where do they fit and where can you help us? And um, no, uh, no educator would, would, uh, would not melt to have that. Um, if you have any other questions, give me a call. Uh, I, have a, I own a school. I got a brick and mortar. Come on in. Let's sit down and take a look. See what you need, and make sure you get it. Okay. Um, again, I call my students, my kids, uh, my little sweethearts. I look in their eyes, and I go, "I'm going to be tough today." And I walk in the classroom, and I melt. And uh, but I'm a daddy. I have children, and when I look at my college classes, I look at them as my own children and what would I want from my kids and that's what I try to provide them 
and that's what I uh, I know all of the professors out there and especially the chairs and the head of the department do the same okay so hopefully that's a long-winded explanation to um, answering your questions we'll see you the next time Julia says Sheldon fire up the computer and get to work okay man take it easy everybody see you around